Oh, and they thought they could get rid of me. <laughs> uh, I'm still here. Oh, it's Boxing Day. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I shouldn't have had so much egg. Uh oh, oh. Dave, the tree fell down again. I'm okay. I haven't broken a limb. Oh, oh. Do you guys want me to introduce the show? No, Dave will be out there in a second. Okay. Bye, all you whippersnappers. I'm going to go have some more eggnog. Yeah. It's this Justin News Comedy Club show. Boxing Day edition. With your very special guest stars, Nick Carter. Bob Giannotti. Simply Courtney. Terry Cooltrip, Desiree Waltz, and our headliner, Liz Frizzes. And now, without further ado, the master of ceremonies, the man who's still on a sugar high from yesterday, please welcome to the stage, A.A. Ron. Yay! Yay! Happy Boxing Day, y'all. All right, everyone, welcome to this Justin News Comedy Club show. I'm going to get myself spotlighted. Hey, there we go. Thank you for being here on this Boxing yeah. Day edition of this Justin News Comedy Club show. We have a great set of comics for you tonight, and it's going to be an awesome night. I hope you had a great Christmas lat yesterday. I know I did. It was a socially distanced Christmas party for me. Yeah, I kept it... <laughs> I stayed socially distanced away so I wouldn't get wouldn't catch any conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I can't wait for 2020 to be done, right? And when it's 2021, 2021, we can say we had hindsight. <laughs> uh, that's a joke I see somewhere else. I know that one's gonna be around, so. Oh, so I hope you guys got everything you wanted for Christmas. I didn't. No, I didn't. That's because I couldn't get everybody something either. I had my wallet was dining on pocket lint receipts and the guilt of what I couldn't get them for. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's the breaks, you know. So Santa Claus was a little bit thin this year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, but you know what? I I had to do a, a comedy set, and I had to look up the word joy. <laughs> You know what I found out? I grew up joyless. I didn't understand. Oh, yeah, and Christmas vacations for me when I was a kid was great on the first day. By the second day, me and the siblings were fighting to see who was going to get the most coal for Christmas. <laughs> it was tough to the nail once in a while. Oh my gosh. And you know what? This is a great show. We're going to have so many great people on tonight. And I would love to get started with our first comic coming up to the stage. Please welcome from New York City. Yeah, I know I keep doing that, right? New York City, Nick Carter. Yay! What's up, guys? Thank you for having me. This is so much fun. Boxing Day edition. Yes, I hope you all had a lovely holiday. I have been doing a lot of stand-up on Zoom. I think I'm worried that stand-up is making me a bad person. Because before stand-up, I just, like, you know, wanted to be nice. Now I just want to start a podcast. That's all I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I've noticed, I've noticed that I'm starting to do stand-up things in real life. Like, I was on a virtual date with this girl. And I'm asking her all the usual questions, you know, what's your name? Where are you from? What do you do? She's like, wow, you really like me. I'm like, ha, I am working on crowd work. Sorry. My girlfriend did break up with me recently. She said I didn't have enough opinions. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I can, I mean, I can have an opinion. What opinion would you like me to have? I can have whatever you want, you know? <laughs> like, I'll, I'll, I'll believe in whatever you want, you know? Astrology, flat earth, 
your little poetry career, whatever you want to do. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, no, she's like, no, I just, I just want you to have your own opinions. Cause like right now we can't hold a conversation. And I'm like, I know, isn't it great? (laughs) <laughs> that's like why we like each other i mean that's the whole reason why this thing works i mean you're trying to ruin the best part i mean that's our like little secret sauce you know don't tell anyone she's like <laughs> she's like that is a really terrible way to look at the world i'm like well you asked for my opinion when you know i mean like <laughs> <laughs> i have um i have been gaining some weight it's not fun I'm gaining a lot of weight. I know that I'm gaining weight because my jeans are tight. The scale says 190. And my... Uh-oh. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. What? Uh, Nick, you're muted. Oh, Nick? You muted Nick. Oh, I didn't mean mute, mute Nick. Nick, you're muted. How's that for losing the room, huh? That's great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about wow. that. I think someone hit the same button as I did. I was doing that bad, huh? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, we'll just move on to this other thing. Um, uh, I don't think all my friends keep saying, Nick, like, when are you gonna like what do you look for in a woman what do you look for a woman honestly someone who'll settle like you know. <laughs> like i don't need someone to say i do i just need someone to say i guess sure <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, i can't believe that um guys still are overreacting to attractive women i can't uh, i can't believe it like it's 2020 like like women are normal. They say stuff like, wow, look, she uh, he's attractive or she's attractive. This is incredible. All right, let's move on. Let's get our let's get our bank loan. Guys say stuff like, wow, look, she's attractive. Oh, my God, this funeral is the best. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> she is gorgeous. She's beautiful. She's the most beautiful woman I ever have seen. I want to marry her. I want to move to the south of France with her. How old was she when she passed? You know, um, <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll get out of here on this. I just think it's crazy that guys are like, or like guys see a nice pair of breasts. They freak out. I see a nice pair of breasts. I yawn. I don't know. Seeing a nice pair of breasts, like watching friends reruns. Like it's fun, but I seen it before. Ones <laughs> <laughs> Dander ones are Rachel and the ones that hang are Chandler when he gained 15 pounds. That's it. Thank you guys so much. All right. Let's give oh. a big round of applause. Woo! Nick. Woo! Oh, oh. And we're so sorry about that interruption. I mean, that. Right. Just a Zoom thing. So hey, you're not on. You're not doing Zoom comedy unless something goes wrong. So we we appreciate you, Nick. Where can we find you on social media? Uh, Nick Carter comedy on Instagram. Just uh, I post everything there. So awesome. Thank you so much, Nick. You know what? I and I've been gaining weight too. It's COVID weight, and I've been walking the dogs, and I still gain weight. I guess it's because I keep walking to the Dunkin' Donuts and back. It doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really help any. Yeah, I burned off 50 calories, ate 500. So it's not working. It's not working. All right, yes. Okay, thank you, Nick. All right. We got a great comic coming up here tonight. He is from Boston. And we have kids. He's from Boston. Let's welcome Bob Giannotti, everyone. Woo, 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 woo. Hey. Hey, Bob. Woo. Hello, everyone. Woo, woo. Yeah. Merry Christmas. And as Jose Feliciano once said, Fauci Navidad. That's a COVID Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Fauci Navidad. Yeah, well, like I said, everybody hope they had a good Christmas. I had a good Christmas. You know, I just rewarded myself with a new car. You know, I you know, I uh, I do a lot of driving for work. You know, so I needed a car that was safe and sturdy and would help me weave through traffic. Uh, so I bought an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I uh, it's nice to go in the city now. You know, I was walking through the city the other day and um, I walked into this. Uh, 
rally about immigration, you know, and this girl pulls me over and says, sir, um, do you have an opinion about the Supreme Court decision about DACA? And I go, uh, you know, well, you know, I'm from Boston, you know, so and it's winter time. So now it gets dark at 4.30 in the afternoons. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really like that. You know. <laughs> the summertime is cool because it gets dark at 8.30 at night. You know, I like that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all kinds of political stuff. Everywhere I turn, it's something political, you know, like all this talk about defunding the police. Man, it's killed my stocks and Dunkin' Donuts and Krispy Kreme, I'll tell you that much. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh. yeah. Uh, I just found out that I have a stalker. Ooh. You know, I, uh, I recently joined this dating app on my phone. And like every single day, now I'm getting these messages from this really young girl named Amber Alert. <laughs> 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 every day, man, every day. <laughs> yeah yeah i like music you guys like music i'm a big music Woo! fan you know Woo! 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 yeah i was just reading that uh deaf leopard and poison are going to be going on tour this spring they're going to combine to go on tour this spring you know i'm not sure if that's a good idea you know because i would think like during a pandemic i would think poison would, would go out on tour with the cure <laughs> <laughs> that's just me yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like the idea of I like the idea of combining tours, you know, put bands together and combine tours, you know, like, you know, like, like Charlie Pride just died last week. I go, wouldn't it have been cool if like Marvin Gaye and Charlie Pride went out on tour, you know, as the Gay Pride tour? Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How about how about fish with sticks? Do on fish and sticks. <laughs> <laughs> You know, MC Hammer and Nine Inch Nails, uh, <laughs> Meat Loaf with Salt and Pepper. <laughs> you know, how about, how about the 45 Cent Tour, you know, where 50 Cent goes out on tour with Nickelback? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had a uh, Christmas dinner yesterday. My brother-in-law is a big fan of The Who. You know, the band the who and he's like man i'm so glad that i saw the who last year before the pandemic i'm like dude you didn't see the who you know it's like roger daltrey and pete towns and both 75 john entwistle's dead keith moon is dead i go dude you didn't see the who you saw who's left <laughs> <laughs> instead of singing about his uh my generation roger daltrey's up there singing about his raging prostate <laughs> <laughs> I read somewhere they you know they say that um uh you know that uh, girls that sleep with rock stars are called groupies and girls that sleep with rappers are called bitches and girls that sleep with country stars are called first cousins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Today was cold today, man. It was like twenty eight. Ever, ever notice that when the uh the the um the weatherman, they always say, yes, it, it, the temperature is 35, but it's going to feel like 28, you know? And it's like, I'm not into this whole feel like process. You know what I mean? Oh. I don't quite get it. Even though I did use it for work the other day, you know, I was like, you know, hey, Dave, you know, I think I'm going to go home now. And he goes, go home. What are you talking about? It's only, it's only one o'clock. And I go, yeah, but it feels like five. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks a lot, man. That's my time. I'm Bob Giannini. Thanks a lot. And where can we find you on social media, Bob? Uh, well, I'm on all the, the FBI wanted. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> no, I'm on Facebook and I don't have a lot. I, uh, I'm on Instagram as Bob Giannini and on, on Twitter, which I hardly ever use, but I'm just mainly on, fa on Facebook. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bob. Yeah, you know what? Some of these reunion tours you're talking about, I think it'd be great. I, I just wish I was that snappy at coming back with ones that would come, you know, come to my mind. I can't think of anything. Uh, you too, and who? Who, you too? <laughs> ah. Oh. <laughs> There's one for you, Bob. <laughs> All right, yes. Uh, so it's Boxing Day, and you know what? I know some people don't understand Boxing Day. Boxing Day is a kind of an English, England and Canadian thing. And it's a great thing. I, I, I have a family in Canada. So 
Boxing Day is where you get all the cheap deals. You know, you go into Walmart and you just stand around and waiting for them to announce the cheapest deals. I'll tell you that right now. You go in there and you just stand there and just wait and just watch the crowd run from one side to the other. That's all. It's all fun. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I, I got a hundred dollar comforter one time for ten bucks. Had to beat an old lady for it, but I got it for ten bucks. So. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Let's get on with the show. The next comedian uh, performing tonight won my game called Bombing Run. That's run on Friday nights, and that's where three comedians go up head to head to head with a mysterious judge looking to see who's got the best setup punch, the best appearance and approach, and who made them laugh the most. So please welcome the stage from Austin, Texas. Simply Courtney, everyone. Hello, hello. What's up? What's up? Um, all right, man. Show of hands here. I have y'all on speaker view. Who here was surprised when you said give it up for simply Courtney and then the camera switched on me? Be honest. <laughs> all right, thank you for your honesty. Uh, it's weird having the name Courtney, it surprises a lot of people every now and then when I'm doing live in person shows. When they say my name, I'll take like a split second too long to go to the mic. And I'll just kind of stand there brooding. And every once in a while, I'll catch people in the audience going, ooh, she's important. She has a bodyguard. <laughs> 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 then I walk over to the mic, and they're looking at me like, wait, what? And it, I kid y'all not, people look at me like I'm punking them. Whenever they go, simply Courtney. And I'm like, ah. You know, it's like nobody's ready for that. It's a strange thing. I drive Uber. Speaking of uh, strange things, because comedy's lucrative. Uh, I drive Uber. <laughs> that was the personal joke at the comics. That wasn't even for the audience. That was the comics, but no, I'm not lying. Pre-pandemic. Anyways, um, I drive Uber, and there's nothing more strange than a passenger not believing who you are. Like, I'm Southern. Uh, as Aaron pointed out, I'm from Texas, so I'm super Southern. I greet people. And I greet people when they come to my car. So, for instance, you know, I drive up. I introduce myself. Hey, how are you doing, ma'am? Welcome to my car. I'm Courtney. This woman looked at me, y'all, and I kid you not, looks at me in my eye, looks at her phone, looks back at me, and just says, nope, and closed the door in my face. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I felt bad, but, you know, it's raining. And I'm like, dang, she chose torrential downpour over riding with me. I guess... And so I felt bad for about five seconds because that's how long it took for me to circle the whole block and then splash her. Yeah. Payback. <laughs> <laughs> that's why she was on fire and I put her out. Okay, I'll stop. Uh, <laughs> um, that's not the strangest reaction I've had, though. Uh, once I pulled up to pick somebody up, introduced myself as they got in the car, and the woman greeted me with a, Are you sure? That's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> now we all know what she was implying by asking that question right that i stole the car and then kept the job that came with the car yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's what, what kind of car thievery are, have you been exposed to you know how you know i'm not a car thief y'all I just refer to it as car thievery. Like, that sounds like Bogville. Like, car thievery, archery, and just read. You know, like, come on. Oy. Ah, the name Courtney, man. It's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, I have two kids. I have a 10-year-old little boy and a 12-year-old little girl. There's not a joke there. I'm just telling you all that because black dads matter. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron, that's going to put this show in a whole different sex in the Facebook now. I'm just letting not Facebook, uh, YouTube now. <laughs> 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 just for that line the cuss words mm -mm. youtube's gonna be like oh man this is one of those kind of shows yeah <laughs> two black comics in a row will get you that uh <laughs> shout out to carrie uh anyways man um having the name courtney has put me in some strange spots i once worked at a uh rec center my degree i actually have a degree parks and recreation i got uh, a degree to play and i was um going to the gym to break up a fight there was this big old fracas going on in the gym i go into the gym and i'm yelling at the kids like hey you kids need to stop fighting because they're fighting and i kid you on that they looked over because it was like my first or second day there and they saw my name on my name tag 
And they just busted out laughing. Like a guy just busted out with, thank you. A guy looks over and says, hey, mister, you have the same name as my girlfriend. And they all stopped fighting and laughed at me. Yeah. Or <laughs> was, you know who said it? The guy that was getting beat up is the one that pointed it out. Yeah. <laughs> so I just flipped my name badge around. I said, you know what? Hit him in the eye. And I went back to my office and logged into LinkedIn and cried. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part about that joke is it's true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Um, I've had a good time telling jokes. Uh, here's the deal. I'm going to plug myself and I'm leaving. Yeah, that's what whatever you want to say said. That's all me up there. And yes, I am standing in front of a green screen. I'm six foot three. So that right there is an achievement because it's staying above my head. So guys, <laughs> y'all have a safe and wonderful rest of your show. I've been Simply Courtney. Bye. All right, that's all good. Hey. Have a safe Courtney, everyone. And we don't have to ask him about social media. It's all up there. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was great, Courtney. You know what? I was bullied in school too, so I really know the meaning of hurt locker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. After why I was a contortionist at one point, but that kind of got old, so I don't, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Whew. Tough on the body. Anyway, all right, let's get to our next comic, shall we? He's from Texas, too. He's from Dallas, Texas. I don't know if these guys have crossed paths or not, but let's <laughs> please welcome the stage, Kerry Coltrip, everybody. Woo! Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, you know, I'm repping that Dallas, Texas. Oh, man, this has been a, this has been a wild year, man. I was living my life as a black superhero. I was a black man yeah. with a job. I had a car and car insurance. I wasn't even riding dirty. That's, <laughs> that's rare for brothers. <laughs> I was the closest thing to Captain Planet you guys will ever see, all until I lost it all when I got kicked out on Thanksgiving. That, you know how bad your family wants you gone when they kick you out on a national holiday? That means they don't, they don't give a damn about your well-being. I should have saw it coming because I can tell my granny didn't want me there because how she cooked for me and my grandpa. Like, she'll make him hamburgers, but why I get hamburger helper? <laughs> that is not okay. She made him a uh, pot of spaghetti. I get spaghettios. I didn't even know they made that. <laughs> I am I am not eleven. I don't have that same digestive system. It's actually worse now. I can eat a cherry and have diarrhea for weeks because my stomach gets small. <laughs> you know? oh. And like, and then before I got kicked out on Thanksgiving. She made him a ham, and she brought me out a plate of Spam. I said, hell no. I'm not taking this. <laughs> that is not the same. <laughs> oh, my God. I left I left to go do a show. I came back. My entire room was clean. I swear it was like a Hilton room. That's how clean it was. She actually impressed me. I'm surprised my granny was able to clean my shower. My shower was so dirty, my shadow was tattooed in there. That's how bad it was. <laughs> They took, they took all of my clothes out, sent them to the cleaners, and then folded them and put them in boxes. I didn't know they cared that much. <laughs> you, you, you know how bad they want you to go when they send your clothes to the cleaners? That's next level. They could have just put it outside. I'd have been happier with that. So now, <laughs> now I'm couch hopping, leasing couches now. And everywhere I go, um, it's random things I got to get used to. So I was just at my boy house. Now he got a, he got fancy, he got fancy pantry. That's the only way I eat now. It's just like, you know, sneaking in my friend's pantries while they sleep. And so he got um, chicken and dumpling and ramen noodle flavor. Wow, that's fancy. I didn't even know they made that. That's only like, that's like 99 cent noodles. Right? They got the nerve of chicken and dumpling. And then he had an oriental the flavor. flavor. Oriental, that's not even a flavor. That's, that's saying somebody from a different country. And when I ate it, it <laughs> swear to God, that shit tastes like a Filipino. That's what it tasted like. And he also had a weird um, candle scent, and it was called Confidence and Freedom. What kind of scent is that? I didn't know you can smell that. Mine would be oppressed and horny. That's what mine would be. <laughs> you know that. The first couch I stayed at, was this uh, Mexican chick I met off Tinder. Her entire house was covered in dog, dog hair. 
I swear to God, I had to take a shower with flea and tick remover. That's how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> she was so lazy and nasty. Her windows was all black. I said, um, did you paint over your window? She said, no, it's just dust. The dust was so thick, it looked like a bedroom comforter. That's how thick the dust was. <laughs> <laughs> I was like 12 bodies got murdered on the door. That's what it looked like. Oh, shit. It was hard to sleep because she had this weird illegal dog. I swear the dog was mixed with hyena and part raccoon. I ain't never seen a dog weird and big like this. And when I'm sleeping on a flea infested couch, I used to wake up, he's standing over me like this, like, just looking at me sideways. Like, I felt, I, I'm already five, three and two thirds. I felt like he was sizing me up. And I was praying that, don't let this dog eat me. Because I hadn't made love to Sandra Buddhigl yet. I cannot die like this. This is not my time. <laughs> Oh man, she was weird. I, um, I went to her and I said, hey, I don't like your coffee cream. It don't taste right. And she's like, oh, that's not coffee cream. That's a uh, conditioner. Um, <laughs> hair conditioner? Who puts that in the fridge, you fried avocado? Nobody does that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Then her shower was dirty. The shower is clogged with hair and all type of unmentionables I couldn't recognize. So I'm taking the shower. I couldn't even feel my legs. I looked down, water's up to my waistline. And I was praying, like, God, please don't, don't let it be piranhas in here. Because I hadn't made out with Lindsay Lohan yet. I cannot die like this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to get some in this position. So she got me drunk, and she tried to, like, make a move on me. And I said, you know what? Screw it. It was all good until she took her clothes off. She was built like Lyndon B. Johnson. I said, hell no, I can't do this. <laughs> I cannot have sex with an LBJ body. I might be homeless, but I got my dignity. Thank you, guys, for my set tonight. All right, let's give a big round of applause for Carrie Coolchip, everybody. And where can we find you on social media? Um, so it's Carrie Coolchip ENT is my um Instagram, and then you can just Carrie Cool on Facebook. Awesome. Oh boy, Carrie, I feel for you. And I'll, I, I, I have a dog that's a border collie Australian cattle dog, and I call Ooh. him, yeah, I call him jealous boyfriend because as, as soon as I get close to the wife, he starts barking. And his barks pierce your ears. You can't hear for weeks afterwards. You're just constant ringing in your ears. And he sheds too. He sheds just as bad as that dog. But in a week, I have a comforter underneath my bed just to his fur. Oh, it's terrible, man. I keep combing him out. And you're like, please, just be done. And no, I just, the vacuum cleaner is just full of him. That's all it is. It's that dog. The other dog, Twiggy. <laughs> There's nothing of her. She just kind of lays a little fur here, and that's it. You know, that's all she is. But Brody, oh, my gosh, he's got he, – he, I think if we take him completely out of the house, the house will just fall down at this point. I think the house will just fall down. Oh. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Hey, we're going to go to our next comic, and they're from up north, eh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, I don't know if she's sitting at Tim Hortons getting a double double or triple triple. But please welcome <laughs> to the stage, Desiree Walsh, everybody. Woo! Sadly, the Tim Hortons are actually closed. Now. Come visit us. 
Um, <laughs> but we leave out the negative things, like the fact that there's a bit of a homeless person issue and we don't have any affordable housing and it's not very wheelchair accessible. And we're kind of mean for a Canadian city. <laughs> like, like really other canadian cities do not like us but you should come see us you really should um, yeah. i'm also learning about the food in america i'm learning about something called an uncrustable we don't have these in canada but they're like frozen peanut butter sandwiches i think mm -hmm. i'm told they're very similar to the white trash cousin of the pop tart or the red-headed stepchild <laughs> of the pizza pocket. And really my question for you Americans is, wouldn't it be easier to make a peanut butter sandwich? Because with an Uncrustable, you have to thaw it and cook it and then eat it. And it seems like a lot of work. Um, <laughs> I did this joke in another comic. It's like, no, no, like you don't have to thaw them or cook them, you just eat them frozen. And now I have more questions than I have answers, America. <laughs> Why are we paying money for the worst day of grade two when the ice pack fell on top of the sandwich? Why are we paying money for that? For oh. a cold, gross, wet sandwich. Why? Um, and then another comic was like, no, no, like you just take them out of the freezer and you let them thaw naturally. And now I have a question. Is it a friend or is it food? Because like, what do you mean? You just take it out of the freezer, hold it close, sing it tiny dancer, just cuddle it till it's desired temperature you need to eat. Um, what I'm saying is I think Smuckers needs to be stopped between that and the goober grape. Um, there's a lot of talk about what's wrong with America right now or what happened. And as a person who only recently discovered New Jersey was a state. I don't believe I'm entitled to an opinion, but I think it started with the invention of the uncrustable. Yep. Um, the other thing I learned about the United States is the lexicon handicapped is still widely used in your country to describe the disabled. That was very interesting to me because I use a wheelchair, so I am disabled. You just can't see it because of Zoom. Um, and you really shouldn't use the word handicapped, not because it's ignorant, but because someone might hear you and think you are from the 1980s and then get all excited because you obviously have a time machine to escape 2020. So they will be disappointed when they discover you are just a dad with a trucker hat. Yeah, language <laughs> matters in this uncertain time. I mean, you can still use the word crippled, but the problem with the word crippled is that only certain people can say it. And you often don't know if you're one of those people till well after it is out of your mouth. Thank you, I am Desiree Walsh. Give a big round of applause to Walsh, Oh my God. Where can we find you on social media, Desiree? Oh, on Instagram, I'm Desiree.Lisa.Walsh underscore. And then on Facebook, it's just Desiree Walsh. Awesome, thank you so yeah. much. You know, and I have heard about Toronto being like that, like the armpit of Ontario. Uh, I live close to Detroit, so it's a sister city. So we're the other <laughs> armpit. Yeah. 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 That's, that's kind of Windsor. But... Yeah. Well, Windsor, you know, Windsor's kind of in between those two, too. And yeah. I'm not saying that I, and I know the, the whole thing is Canadians are very friendly, except in, <laughs> except in Windsor. They're not that friendly. They're not that bad. I don't know what it is about the border town, but they're not that friendly. <laughs> they usually say, Go off F A. I'm like, wait a minute. Whoa, hold the phone here. <sighs> I just asked for coffee. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. All right. We're going up to our next comic. And this comic is a friend of mine. She's been on this show a few times, maybe four or five. I don't know. I can't keep track. Please welcome the stage from Phoenix, Arizona. Liz Frizzis, everybody. Woo! <laughs> this just in news. Yes, I'm Liz Frizzius. Okay, let's talk reality here for a moment. I'm 50 years old, and I spent 30 years of my life in the military. What does that mean? It means in my lifetime, I've survived SARS, MERS, H1N1, AIDS, Ebola, swine flu, terrorist attacks, and warfare. 
and COVID <laughs> is where they pull out all the stops? <laughs> <laughs> all this piece of junk needs is a publicist and an agent. Let's just work on its identity. You know, take it down the William Morris Agency. You know, get an agent for it. Hey, COVID, problem we got with you, you're just not cute. You got all these spikes all over you, you're unfriendly. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, spikes went out with punk. That's so 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. I used to manage the sex pistols. I told them to upgrade their image. What did they do? They ignored me. Next thing you know, they break up in Oklahoma. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. You need to get modern. You need to get streamlined. After we get that, then we're going to work on a jingle. We got to make it popular again. I want you thinking along the lines of Snoop Dogg. You know Snoop Dogg? Yeah. He got brought up on that murder rap. Next thing you know, we took care of that little problem and he's selling cereal. That's what I want you thinking. <laughs> I want you thinking COVID crunch. <laughs> Eight vitamins and minerals. My grandson will love you. Those little cherry chips to go with it. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Once we get you in there, we're going to start with a jingle. You know what I'm talking about? The jingle. COVID, COVID, bobe, they banana, fana, phobe, me, my, bobe, and COVID. <laughs> <laughs> but then we're going to go with the ultimate earworm. You know what I'm talking about, earworm? Yeah, I'm talking earworm. It's a small germ after all. It's a small germ after all. Everybody sing. It's a small germ after all. It's a small, small germ. <laughs> Here's the stupid shit about COVID. I'm out at the meteor crater. Gentlemen, please quit telling women that this is six inches. <laughs> <laughs> from this woman and she looks up at me uh, excuse me miss uh, you need to socially distance houston we have a karen <laughs> <laughs> i said lady i'm 18 feet away what do you think this is a game well yeah this is the way we catch covid catch covid catch covid <laughs> this is the way we catch covid <laughs> until someone goes down <laughs> 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 Great for ages eight and up, and far more survivable than the dodgeball I used to play as a kid. <laughs> You're awful. You're just not taking this seriously. So I picked up her infant. Red Rover, Red Rover said COVID right over, and I winged the kid at her. <laughs> she caught the kid. You didn't break through. Karen's got the COVID. Karen's got the COVID. Oh. <laughs> You're awful. You just don't take it seriously. Fine. I told her send her over a little first grader, you know, cute little one with the little hair bows in. I said, let me teach you how to jump rope. Two little microbes sit in a tree. K I S S I N G. First comes SARS, then comes Mono, then comes COVID as the new Paisano. <laughs> <laughs> If we really wanted to have fun with this thing, we would just merchandise the heck out of it. We just had Christmas. And you know, little Susie just can't sleep without her My Little COVID doll. Washable <laughs> and oh so cuddly. <laughs> and little Reuben, oh, we have a forgotten little Reuben. We have got for little Reuben, the new COVID action figure with new spreadable action. Goes out to a range of at least six feet. Oh. <laughs> but the problem is that agent from the William Morris agency says, COVID, you know what? The problem we got with you now, yeah, you're so 2020 ago. You're so 2020 ago. All I need to do is bring in a cheerleading squad. I can get the Redskins cheerleaders cheap. They need work. Two, four, six, eight. We just need to vaccinate, defeat, COVID. Yay! <laughs> Yes, I did spend 30 years of my life in the military. And like an idiot, I retired last year. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else find out that they suck at being a civilian? <laughs> 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 
I sit down with a career counselor and he looks at me and says, Liz, what are you good at? I said, killing and bombing. He said, stand up comedy. I said, sign me up. (laughs) 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 Most comics on here are worried about disappointing their parents. I got to disappoint the entire Department of Defense. (laughs) 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 You tell you when you get out of the military, what you really need to do, find something you really enjoy, something you're good at, something you got an interest in. I tried to join the women's movement, but oh my God, are these guys Looney Tunes. (laughs) They tell me we're going to combat the stereotype of the over-emotional, irrational female by screaming through the streets with knitted vaginas on our heads. (laughs) <laughs> who came up with this plan warner brothers on an acid trip <laughs> i'm what i told putty hat <laughs> I, did, I did want putty hat <laughs> after a while you just want to grab a bite of putty hat and smack their skulls together to see if you can spark a brain cell <laughs> okay honest broker here i was out at the baltimore women's march and I totally screwed up. We were talking equal rights. And I suggested universal draft registration. <laughs> I got front row seats to Pussy Riot. <laughs> <laughs> and for anybody who's wondering, yes, that is the Russian punk band who, you know, they need to get rid of those spikes. It's so 40 years ago. <laughs> see i rapidly found out i can hack off any female on the face of the planet my own mother got me a t-shirt once that says pissing off the entire planet one person at a time <laughs> 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 then she proceeded to tell me that they were on special <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, I found out on my wedding day that my mother-in-law was included among the group that is really not a fan. <laughs> she looks at me right in the middle of the wedding, right in the middle of the church aisle, and says, your two sisters seem so normal. <laughs> so do her 12 ex-husbands! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking marriage advice from somebody who's upgraded their spouse more than their cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little too much like asking the Cubs for advice on how to win the World Series. You might get there after a hundred years of trying. <laughs> In the meantime, you're cursed with an old goat, a cork bat, and a couple of condemned balls. <laughs> okay, you need to understand this about my mother-in-law. The woman... <laughs> Let's put it this way. She's such a cougar, the Department of Fish and Wildlife tagged her as an alpha predator. (laughs) (laughs) She's 80 years old and she makes tic-tac-toe look like a Mensa game. She's so easy. (laughs) See, the worst thing about it is Sony made a video game out of her. Grand Theft Husband. Oh! (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Thank you, sir. The worst thing about it, she rides men like buses. She hops off one and climbs on the next. (laughs) (laughs) The only way of putting an end to this woman's reign of terror is for somebody to put the fatal back in femme fatale. Oh. (laughs) Hey, I shouldn't put down my mother-in-law. In most states, that would be considered euthanization. (laughs) <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's my time. I'm Liz Freezius. Have a wonderful night. All <laughs> Please right, keep it going go. for your host, A.A. Ron. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Liz. And let's give a big round of applause for our headliner, Liz Freezius, everybody. Yay. Where can we Woo! find our social media, Liz? Woo! I'm at Liz Freezius on Facebook and liz freezius.com on just a website. Awesome. Thank you so much, Liz. Wow, that was an awesome set. I'm going to be singing the, the COVID song for a little bit now. I'm stuck to sing the COVID song. It's a small world, COVID after all. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, that was a great show, everybody. I would love to thank our comedians right now. Nick Carter, Bob Giannani, Simply Courtney, yeah. Gary Cooltrip, 
Desiree Walsh, and again, Liz Frizzius, everybody. Woo! 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 Tonight. <laughs> and I want to thank my co-producer tonight for being part of the show. Let's give a big round of applause. Spotlight it yourself. Jared Johnson, everybody. Let's thank him. Woo! Woo! Yeah, and so, in about what? 40, about uh, 45 minutes, you guys are being on another show. What's that show, Jared? You and Liz are on that show. Uh, but Gen Xer versus uh, Boomer. And you're the Boomer? Yep. <laughs> I hope you have more Boomer. I'm too young for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, you know what? Just go, you know, yeah, after you're done with this show, go follow that show and check him out. We can be part of the audience. They told us we can be part of the audience. So let's go in there and give them a great audience to go with tonight. So that was the show for tonight. That was the Boxing Day edition of This Justin News Comedy Club. It was an awesome show. Woo! Thank you so much for being part of the show. And next week, it's another show. It's New Year 2021, right? Woo! 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 Let's hope so. Let's hope 2021 is a heck of a better year than 2020. Oh, oh my gosh. So, don't say that. Don't ever say that. You get in trouble for doing that kind of stuff. Anyways, that's the show for tonight. I've been your host, A.A. Ron. I have Derek Johnson, the co-producer. This has been This Justin News Comedy Club, and it's been an oddly funny production. Good night, everybody. Woo! All right. <laughs>